oh, I showed you guys three techniques already to make something look really real. So you shade it in, you know, that's one. You add noise, that's two. And then you add a... Yo, yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to The Product Designer. It's Jimmy, and today I'm going to be going over how to Photoshop like an industrial designer, part three. So if you guys haven't seen part one or part two yet, definitely go and watch those before you watch this one. I'm going to be going over these techniques right here. And then once we go over this one for the next video, I'll be Photoshopping something for you guys. So definitely leave like something down in the comments below, something that I can Photoshop and... Uh, that's what we'll do in the next video. It could be a car. It could be some product that you think would be cool. All right. Please, no furniture, though. I really don't like designing furniture. All right. So let's do noise. So uh, we ended off in the last video with, you know, a shaded box, a shaded cube, right? I am going to select the layer above it, which is its clipping mask, its shaded mask. I don't like it when it's all like perfect and, you know, gradient and computer. So what I'll do is I'll add noise. Filter. Uh, noise add noise and this kind of just adds some like TV grain you know what I'm talking about like it just adds some grain I don't want it to be that strong though I just want it to be you know the goal is to I don't really care too much about this percentage but I just kind of go based off of what it looks like in the situation and so this one I kind of just want to make it a little more subtle you know so I'll do something kind of like this if you guys can see I'll hit OK so that number doesn't really matter too much is more about what it actually will look like and what this does to me, I kind of like, I like how it has that gradient and then now it has this noise on top of it and it just kind of adds more realism. It adds more texture and adds more kind of flair and it makes it look more producty in a way. So I really like adding that noise to my shading layers. So I'll do that with this friend right here, layer five. I'll do a uh, filter noise, add noise. And then since it's already set from the last time, I'll just hit okay. And then I'll go up and I'll do this final layer right here. So file or filter, noise, add noise, hit OK. So you guys can see the difference there. Like already, it just looks more producty. It looks like um, it just, you know, it just looks more real in a way, just adding this noise, adding this texture. If you actually look at a real product, like imagine if this was a very sharp cube. Um, or maybe a sharp dice or something, these edges wouldn't be so sharp. It wouldn't be like this razor super sharp thing. Uh, so what usually I would do is add a stroke around this shape, add a stroke around this shape, and then blur it, and then it'll give you more of a nicer transition. So I'll show you how I do that right now. This layer here is the main shape of that side. This here is the shade layer so what I'm gonna do is do a new layer I am on the uh, main body of the shape I'm gonna do a new layer and that automatically creates this layer here as a clipping mask but I don't I want it to be above this one so that it shines through and it doesn't get hidden under so I'm gonna move it above boom so it still says a clipping mask to this main layer but now it's gonna be above this layer so uh, since it's above now I am going to do uh, hold down command and then I am on Apple so the equivalent to Windows you should do that one um, hold down command and click the thumbnail of the main layer it'll give you that marching ants as you guys see I am on the new layer still I'm gonna do edit stroke so you could do it on the inside, the center, or the outside of the marching ant. So uh, depends on the situation. Right now, I'll do it center and click OK. So now the line is more in the center. I can see, though, that this side here is getting hidden under this side. So I actually don't want it to be clipping mask to this. I'm going to release it. So to show you guys how to release it, you just right click, release clipping mask, and it'll release it out of from that main layer. And then I am going to move this above all the way up, just all the way up. So it's really good to like keep all your layers under control, understand where everything is and the workflow will be way quicker. Same thing with this side here, because this side I want also uh, a kind of a transition to this side. So uh, I will select this by holding command, clicking the thumbnail of the shape. I want to make a stroke around. I will on the new layer and I will do edit stroke. Okay, done. All right, then I'll do command D and I'll release the uh, marching ants. Okay, so now I got these two 
strokes here. They're very hard. So what I'm going to do is blur them. So I'll do edit or no filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And that will give me a nice, you know, more of a transition, nice soft line. D this matter, this number here, again, it doesn't matter to me as much as what it actually looks like. So I just set it to what it looks like. I want it to blur, but still kind of hold its integrity of a line. If you blur too much, it starts to kind of fade, fade too much away like that. So I kind of just want to make sure that you see the line, but it's still blurry in a way, you know, so something like that. And then I'll hit OK. I'll do the same thing to this uh, edge here. I'll do edit or filter blur Gaussian blur since it was set from the last one I'll hit OK so you guys now you guys see that stroke that is making up these edges here it looks so much more real it looks way better than you know just having something like this you see so the whole idea is to just make it seem a little bit more real right now i think the strokes are a little too strong i'm just you know like showing you guys the technique i'll probably lower the opacity to something like that you know and, it, and the subtle you are but the more details you have the better it's going to be uh so i'll just do something like that and that looks pretty good Okay, and then blur. So blur is a good one too. So I showed you guys three techniques already to make something look really real. So you shade it in, you know, that's one. You add noise, that's two. And then you add a stroke around the transition zone. So that's three. And what I'm going to do is show you guys another one, which is blurring. So when you actually look at a rendering or anything really, it's ne you don't really ever see things that is this hard, like such a strong, hard you know, line, right? You kind of almost see a little blur to it. So what I'm going to do is click this main shape layer. It's, it's just the blur tool. So it's right here. This is going to be blurring this top part here. Uh, I'm going to have the strength up here to 100. And then I'm just going to kind of blur, hit the, uh, the corners of this shape. And you guys see what's happening? Like it's really kind of blurring that edge there. And so it's just making it ever so soft for you. And it's almost kind of like a depth of field in a camera. So I'll be doing it to this layer here. This one is this side. I'm going to hit the blur and then I'm just going to do this edge here. And you know, you could even go into the sh uh, shaded layer and, and blur that too. And it'll blur that noise that we did as well. And I'll just kind of add more to that realism. Uh, but that's pretty much what I do. That's those two tricks I'm teaching you guys will make your renderings look way more real than a lot of you know, people that will teach you. Uh, this is the stuff that I never really hear broken down, but I see people do it like when they have those fast forwarded videos, which is not what I want to show you guys because you don't really learn too much with those fast forwarded videos. Just blur that side, blur that. So you guys can see that's a huge difference already. Like it's such a small change, but it's going to make your renderings look so much more real. So what do we got going on? Blur and then opacity. So you guys, it's not a big deal. You guys know what opacity is. It's really just okay. So I got, I got this side here. What if I, this, I thought that this dark side here was a little bit too dark what I would do is I'll just go over here to opacity and just lower it down a little bit and it'll just kind of reduce the transparency-ness of that layer and if I wanted to show a little more I'll just you know add some so I do that a lot uh, depending on you know what I'm looking for if I added too much noise instead of redoing the noise I'll just reduce the opacity a little bit and it'll kind of give me the same effect of reducing the noise all right, guys, so I went over all of the techniques here. If you guys uh, missed that first part and the second part, definitely go back and watch those. All right, guys, that's about it. If you learned a thing or two, definitely hit that thumbs up button. Also, leave a comment down below for what you want me to start rendering in the next video. Also, if there's any questions, leave it down below. This is a very helpful community, and somebody will be able to answer your industrial design question. My name is Jimmy, and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.